just skip that, even though we did that with memo. All right. So now we get to this, this, a new topic, application of fundamental identities. So we're going to simplify some expressions using trig functions. So start off easy. So tan x, cosine x, but now I'm not giving you the angle. I'm just saying it's going to be some angle x. So tan x, cosine x, how can you simplify that? Sine x. Yeah, so it's just sine x because the cosine x x's cancel out. And don't worry about the denominators being zero or anything like that. Cotangent squared x minus cosecant squared x. Well, if you remember one of those alternate trig identity, uh, those Pythagorean identities using uh, involving cosecant and cotangent, you can use that directly. But if you don't, and I usually don't, I don't bother to remember that. The trick here is just to convert everything to sines and cosines. And then you, then the only Pythagorean identity you need is sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, which somehow I can remember. Yeah. Where we start doing like the simplifying expressions like this, this yeah. isn't going to be the best of actually like having a graph them, right? Or chart them. It's going to just be kind of knowing the rules to convert. Yeah, just knowing the rules to convert. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for here, cosine squared over sine squared, that's cotangent, it's cosine over sine, minus 1 over sine squared. Now I can combine those fractions. Get this. And now what you can do is say, okay, well, what's that on top? There's sine squared x. It's actually minus sine squared x. So cosine squared, so start with cosine squared plus sine squared equal to 1. Subtract that from both sides, subtract my, uh, 1 from both sides. Okay, so you get minus <coughs> sine squared. So you get this minus one. Alright. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you happen to remember the other one, then you can plug that in directly. And skip that step. But there's no reason you have to do that. Okay, sorry. I'm going to that one by quick. Another example tangent squared x times cosecant squared x minus 1. Well, now we'll use this and turn that into cotangent squared x. And cotangent is 1 over tangent, so tangent squared those cancel just gets kept on. Let's try d now. <coughs> Here, d uses more than one angle. It uses x and it uses pi over 2 minus x, which is the complement of x. The complementary angle formula applies to any angle x. It doesn't have to be acute. So it's always true. Sine of the complement is equal to cosine of x. So the trick here is to get all the angles the same first. You've got to get all the angles the same, and then start applying the identities that we know for just a single angle. So this is cosine over sine, so that's cosine. Secant x over tan x, that's 1 over cosine divided by sine over cosine. The 1 over cosines cancel, and I'm left with 1 over sine, or cosecant of x. How about this one? Let's factor and simplify it. Cotangent squared x of quantity 1 minus cosine squared x. Yeah, so you factor out the cotangent x. I got one minus cosine, and then this equals what? Negative sine squared. No, almost. It goes positive sine squared. Yes, if you're going to say the wrong answer, it just confuses people that are. I'm just going to say negative one for everything. No, I'll correct them. If you're going to guess, maybe you shouldn't answer. Yeah. Let's give you a punch card. <laughs> Can I get a few pizzas in this? No. Challenge card. Sine squared x. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Sine cancel, I'm left with cosine squared x. That's pretty good. 
All right. Uh, what's up? Uh, one minus sine x to the fourth. Ooh. You all know the difference of two squares, right? A squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. That's what we have here, so we can factor this. Yeah, factor. And now what's that? That's cosine squared. Okay. Can we simplify that any further? No, I guess not. The slide says no. <laughs> 1 plus 2 cotangent squared of x plus cotangent to the fourth of x. What's this? This is the square of a binomial. So it's 1 plus cotangent squared x quantity squared. That, using this, is secant squared of x, so that's secant to the fourth. Cos sorry, cosecant to the fourth of x. All right. I think that's the last example I've got on this slide. All right. So let's try simplifying this. 1 over cosecant x plus 1 minus 1 over cosecant x minus 1. So I got, I'm subtracting two fractions. What do you got to do? You, go, you, need, we need to, you need to combine them. Common denominator. In this case, you just take the product of the two denominators. That's a common denominator. And you get that on the bottom. And on the top, you get this denominator minus that denominator. So you get that. So, so now what do we do? Um, the cosecants cancel on top. That's kind of nice. And I'm left with a minus 2 on top. And on the bottom, this is the difference of two squares again. That's cosecant squared x minus 1, which, if you convert it to sines and cosines, you can use the Pythagorean identity or use the other identity, Pythagorean. Just, this is just cotangent squared x. So this is minus 2 over cotangent squared of x. 1 over cotangent is tangent. So this is minus 2 tan squared of x. Okay. All right. Did, did anyone do this in high school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see some nodding heads. Anybody not do it in high school? Uh, yeah, I think it just depends on... Oh, what? Not sure category? I, I did this a lot in high school, and I loved it. Um, I can remember it. I think this is actually one of the things I can remember. This is this is how this is how I knew I was a nurse. I mean, there were lots of other clues that I, I didn't know them because I was a nerd. Saw in the book that you had your favorite solution for our favorite group of Pythagoreans. Yeah. Okay. All right. Guilty as charged. <laughs> All right. Part B. Was your velocity in the circle? Yes, it was. I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it was. <laughs> Never mind. Everybody cool. The clock units are cool. I have one that says it's 5 o'clock every morning. Combine the fractions again. Common denominator. So on top, I've got. Oh, what do I have on top? I've got this thing quantity squared, because I'm all point that, and then I have sine squared. Now what? Blessing. All right, let's expand that, and you get that nice thing, which is 1. So that's 1. And that combined with that one, I get 2 plus 2 cosine x. So now what? Cancel. 
Yeah, so factor out of two from the numerator, and I got one plus cosine x, which cancels with that. I get two over sine x, or two cosine theta. Two Uh, trig substitutions. I am not going to do this. <laughs> Can we say that? Or does that mean that? <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to do this. You just said this was fun. So make sure you double underline it. The last slide is this one. This slide is a little bit less fun. <laughs> so we'll skip it. <laughs> Express that as trig function in, in terms of trig functions of the component angles. We'll do that for sine and cosine, and then by extension we get it for the other, we get it for all the others. <coughs> so sine of u plus v, u and v are angles. So sine of u cosine of v plus cosine of u sine v. So you just mix these cosines and sines together. And if it's plus, if the angle is plus here, you use plus over there. And if you, if it's minus, if it's u minus v, you subtract. You use the minus sign here. You see that? So the convention is, if you see a plus or minus in more than one place in a single equation, that means it's really two equations. It's one equation where you take the, the plus, the, both pluses, and another one where you take both minuses. Cosine is different. Cosine of u plus or minus v is cosine of u cosine v minus or plus sine of u sine v. Now that means if you take the plus here, you take the minus there. If you take whatever's on top of one of them, you, you take the top thing all the way along. And if you take the bottom thing on one of them, you take the bottom thing on all of them. So if that's a plus, you use a minus, and if that's a minus, you use a plus. So the sign is reversed. Okay. We won't derive these formulas. You could, uh, the book derives them for you. If you really want to see how, how they actually are derived, you can look at those. What we're going to do now is extend these to a formula for the tangent of the sum of two angles. tangent of u plus v, and can we write it in terms of just tan u and tan v? It turns out we can do this. So we use our basic identities. So tan of u plus v is sine over cosine. Now I go up here and I plug these things in, and on the top I get that thing with a plus, and on the bottom I get that thing with a minus. And now we just um, do some do some manipulations on this. So this is in terms of sines and cosines. Can we get this in terms of just tangent only? The answer is yes, we can. And here's the trick: you take each side here and divide it, divide each uh, term here by cosine u, cosine v, everywhere. So you're just uh, dividing this by cosine u cosine and dividing that by cosine u cosine v. Since you're dividing both sides of a fraction by the same thing, it doesn't change the value. And so work that into each term. I get that, 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 and that. And now just look at these individual fractions and see what they are. That cancels. And that is what? Tangent of u. 
just do that everywhere. Those cancel, and that's 10 tangent of, of b. Okay. That completely cancels. So on top, we get tan u plus tan b. On the bottom, both of those cancel, so we get 1. And here, I get what? Tan u times tan b. There we go. Nice high D formula for tangent of two angles. Um, if I did U minus V instead of U plus V, then what changes is that that turns into a minus and that turns into a plus. So the general formula then is, is that. Where that now is reversed. Okay. Questions? Yes. Not, not in general that I know of. Not an easy one. Sometimes you just have to play with it for a while and notice that. <laughs> no, and no, she didn't say that. <laughs> you just, you just have to try different things, and sometimes it simplifies, and sometimes if you try three things and nothing works, maybe. It's So, using these sum and difference formulas, combined with special angles, we can now find nice simple expressions for sines and cosines of trig functions of other angles besides the special angles by adding and subtracting special angles together. So, for example, sine of 15 degrees. Well, 15 degrees is not a special angle. But it is the difference of two special angles. It's the difference of 45 and 30. So what we'll now do is we'll apply the angle difference formula for sines, expand that out, and now all of these are special angles. So sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Sine of 30 is 1 half. You can factor out a root 2 over 2, and inside you have root 3 over 2 minus a half, simplifying a little bit, and you get, combining the 2s, you get root 2 times root 3 minus 1 divided by 4. A nice, simple expression. But I saw something about that. Okay. Uh, you get a nice, simple expression just involving full numbers, square roots, and, you know, the arithmetic operations. All right, let's do that again with a tangent of 75 degrees. So 75 is not a special angle, but it's the sum of two special angles, 45 and 30. Plug that into the formula for the uh, tangent function, tangent of a sum, I get that, and now plug in these values. Tangent of 45 is a 45 degree angle. What's the slope? Uh, no, the slope is a rise over run. This is 1. Okay. So tangent of 45 is 1. Tangent of 30, <coughs> well, it's root 3 over 3. Okay. Over 1 minus 1 times root 3 over 3. Now multiplying both sides of the fraction, say, by 3, you get 3 plus, plus root 3 on the bottom and uh, on the top, and on the bottom you get 3 minus root 3. Okay? That looks like it might be pretty well simplified, but it's really not. Any ideas? Of it? So this is an example where this, this thing might not obviously be simplifiable, but if you tr try a couple different things, you can actually simplify it. What would you might do to simplify that? Yeah, okay. I heard things close to it. What you'll do is I'll multiply both sides by 3 plus root 3. So multiply this by 3 plus root 3, multiply that by 3 plus root 3. 
what that'll do is that'll square that on top, which we can simplify further. And on the bottom, that will remove the square root on the bottom. So we'll clear the radical on the bottom. Because then what we have is a difference of two squares on the bottom. So we do that, we get this. And now I have the difference of two squares. This is going to be what? It's going to be 3 squared minus root 3 squared. So that's 9 minus 3. So that's 6 on the bottom. And expanding this on top, I get 3 squared, which is 9, plus 2 times 3 times root 3. That's 6 root 3. And then times plus root 3 squared, which is 3. So now I can combine that further on top. I get 12 plus 6 root 3 divided by 6, and now I can factor out a 6 from both sides. I just get 2 plus root 3, which is much simpler. Okay. <coughs> That's a tangent of 75. It's root 3 plus 2. All right. Are we good with that? Um, Cosine of 7 pi over 12. 7 pi over 12. Can you express that as the sum of two special angles? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Care to elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> so 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12. But 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4. And 4 pi over 12 is pi over 3, and those are both special angles. So, 7 twelfths is the fourth plus a third. So this is cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3, or if you prefer, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. Okay. Uh, cosine of the sum formula, you get all of this, these, now these are all special angles, you plug them all in, plug in the values, do a little factoring, and you get this, combine those together, you get root 2 times 1 minus root 3 divided by 4. Just looking at this, can you tell if that's positive or negative? Just looking at the right hand side. It's going to be negative because root 3 is bigger than 1. So you subtract, you get a negative number here, and everything else is positive. So it's going to be negative. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to skip this example here. This example, I'll just tell you what it's, what it's meant to exercise. It's meant for you to recognize when you actually have something that looks like the right-hand side of this angle sum formula. You can then convert it to the left-hand side. So if you happen to see something that kind of looks like this, and you have a product of two cosines and a product of two sines of two different angles, that matches the right-hand side of one of the angle sum formulas. It's, it's, it's actually a cosine of the difference. So you can actually take this and simplify it into this, which is then the cosine of minus 4, but that's the cosine of 4 degrees. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. But let's do this example down here. This is a one. Suppose sine of u is minus a third. And I'll tell you that u is between minus pi over 2 and 0, so it's in quadrant 4. A cosine of v is 2 fifths, and v is in that range. What, what quadrant is that? Quadrant 1. So v is cubed. Find sine of u minus v. So we don't know what u is, we don't know what v is, but we do know what their trig functions are. So we expand this, and now the thing is we know what sine of u is and cosine of v, but we've got to find cosine of u and sine of v. Do this right. That's where we need the quadrant information. 
So sine of u cosine of v is minus a third times two fifths. To get cosine of u and sine of v, we use that information and a Pythagorean identity, or we could just draw a triangle. And so this is quadrant four. So we have three on the hypotenuse and one on the opposite. That would give us a minus one third. So on the adjacent, what do I have? Uh, two square roots of two, and it's positive, right? Because it's 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 to the right. So positive two square roots of two. Quadrant four. Okay, good. So sine cosine of u is then going to be two root two over three. Now I got to do the same thing for sine of v. But now I'm in I'm in quadrant one, so everything's positive. So I have two on the adjacent, five on my hypotenuse, and so what's over here? Square root of 20, 21. <laughs> Sorry. So square root of twenty one. Over five. I swear I, I fixed this before. Okay, but no excuses. I mean, I'll, I'll fix it. No excuses. I'll just do it. I blame Wade. I blame Wade. <laughs> yeah, he's Navy. All right, so combining everything, and I get this. Combining a little bit, and I get. So this this is has no square factors, so it's just even as the square root of 42. And so we get that. And that's probably the best answer. That's the that's the simplified exact answer. Okay. Questions? Alright. Uh, that was sine of u minus v, let's find cosine of u minus v. This is now easy because we already know what all the sines and cosines are, so we just plug them into this formula, do a little simplifying, and we get that. So, recall the go. Let's go back and recall the the um, complementary angle formula for sines. Sine of pi over two minus x cosine x. This now follows from the angle addition formula. Right, because this is just the difference of two angles. Plug this in and expand, and sine of pi over two is one because that's that's pointing straight up. Cosine of pi over two is zero because it's pointing straight up, and so there's no horizontal component. And so I'm just left with cosine of x. Okay. So we can actually take the difference formula and rederive the complementary angle formula. And all of those other, the supplementary angle formula, the, the trig function of minus an angle, we can now all do that. And just in terms of the formulas we just learned. So let's write this in terms of trig functions of x. There should be an x there. There is an x there, it's just in the wrong place. It's, it's in the circle. Somehow it got moved to the circle. All right, cosine of pi minus x. Writing it out. Cosine of pi is what? Negative one. Negative one. Sine of pi is what? Zero. Zero. Good. So this is negative cosine of x. Call this the supplementary angle formula for cosine. Sine of pi over four <coughs> plus x. Well, plug that in. Sine of pi over four, cosine x, cosine pi over sine of x. These two things are the same. They're both root two over two. So I get root two over two, cosine x plus sine x. Verify 
verify this identity. So here's another identity. You can come up with lots and lots of these identities. Um, here is one involving, if you take the sine of x plus y times the sine of x minus y, that's the sine squared of x minus the sine squared of y. This kind of looks like the difference of two squares formula, doesn't it? Except you throw a sine function, you kind of scatter the sine function in there in a couple places. But if you strip the sines out, it's the difference of two squares. All right, so let's verify this. So, uh, sine x plus y sine of x minus y. Well, expand that out using the angle sum formula, the angle difference formula. And in fact, you do get the difference of two squares when you do this. You're going to get this term, sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. And then this term is sine x cosine y minus cosine x sine y. Same thing except minus instead of plus. So this gets the difference of these two squares. It's that thing squared minus that thing squared. But now we expand this out some more. We get sine squared x cosine squared y from here, right? And now we'll use the Pythagorean identity to convert this to a sine. Because the answer is just in terms of sine. So we want to get rid of cosine and replace them with sine. So we replace this with 1 minus sine squared y. We replace this with 1 minus sine squared x. Expand it out, do some cancellations, and we're left with what we're left with. Left with uh, the right-hand side. All right. So, next one. Can we express sine of 2u and cosine of 2u in terms of sine of u and or cosine of u? So if you take twice an angle, and you can do this because u, 2u is just u plus u. So if you plug that in for, to the sine, you're going to get 2 sine u cosine u. And cosine of 2u, plug that into the cosine of the sum, and you're going to get cosine squared u minus sine squared u. These are called the double angle formulas for cosine and sine. Uh, you can take this right-hand side and apply a Pythagorean identity and convert this into sines. So this is 1 minus sine squared u minus sine squared u, and you get 1 minus 2 sine squared u. Alternatively, you can take the sine squared convert it into cosine squared, 1 minus cosine squared, and that will give you 2 cosine squared u minus so cosine of 2u can be expressed in any of these three different ways. They're all useful at times to have. So that's the double angle formula for sines and cosines. We also have a double angle formula for tangents. We just plug in u plus u to the tangent, and we get 2 tan u on top and 1 minus tan squared u on the bottom. Okay. All right. And we didn't have to do actually any of that, so we can ignore all of that. We, had, we already had the formula for tan of u plus u. <coughs> so we actually used the green right away. All right. Let's do an example. Suppose theta is in quadrant 2, and the sine of theta is 11 thirteenths. Find the exact value of sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and tan of 2 theta. So, for at least for sine, I need both sine and sine of u and cosine, sine of theta and cosine of theta both. So I've got to find cosine of theta if I'm going to do part A. And for part B, I already know sine of theta, and so I could, say, use this one. And, but part C, I need to know tan of theta, which requires both sine and cosine of theta. All right, so sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta 
Cosine of theta is negative. <coughs> so if you draw a triangle to the Pythagorean theorem, you get that cosine of theta is minus 4 root 3 over 13. Plugging that in, and I get 2. I get all of that simplifying as 88 root 3 over 169 minus. Okay, so that's an exact expression for sine of 2 theta. Cosine of 2 theta, just use the second form here and just plug in sine of theta. And it's that thing squared. Simplifying, you get minus 80 over 169. And finally, tan of 2 theta is sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. Well, I've already find the, found those two things, so I just divide this thing by that. 169 is canceled, and I'm left, the minus signs cancel. All of that is just using the formula and chugging away. Okay, questions? So now we're going to take the double angle formulas and use them in reverse. Start with the double angle formula for cosine of PU. So that's one minus sine squared of two u. Let's take this and solve for sine squared of u. If I solve for sine squared of u, I get sine squared of u is one minus cosine of two u over two. Likewise, if I took cosine of two u is two cosine squared u minus one, take that alternate formula and solve for cosine squared of u, I get this, cosine squared of u is one plus cosine u over 2. These are called power reducing because they start with a sine or a cosine to some power bigger than 1 and reduce it to something where the power on the, uh, the exponent on the trig function is just is less. It's equal to 1 in this case. At the, at the cost of having a new angle here, a double angle. So this is occasionally useful. Um, you could you could you you could do Fourier analysis using this power reducing. Tangent of two u, uh, tangent squared of u, is just the ratio of these two things. So it's one minus cosine two u over one plus cosine two u. Right. So those are called the power reducing formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. Let's use them, and let's take sine to the at sine of x to the power of 4 and express it just in terms of cosine to the first power for various angles. So let's do that. Sine of 4x is well, it's sine squared x quantity squared. So now what? Now I can use a power reducing formula for the inside thing, that one right there, and at that thing. But I still have I still have to square it. So, but I'm, I'm making progress anyway. So now I own, now the exponent is the biggest exponent is two instead of four. So okay, so I expand that out and I get this thing, and that's fine, that's fine. But now I still have a cosine squared of two x now. So now what? Go back up here and use the power this power reducing formula now and apply it, plug it in there. I get one plus cosine of four x because I had two x to start with. Now I double that. Now I have four x divided by two. A little simplification, and we get that. So this is the sum of terms. And no term involves a trig function to a power higher than 1. Okay. All right. So I have time before the break just to get the half angle formulas in. Just to introduce them. Then we'll take an, a little early break because I know we're, we're kind of lacking. So, uh, So start with the power reducing formula. I'll go back a slide. Start with these. Okay. 
Now, instead of u here, plug in u over 2. So sine squared of u over 2, cosine squared of u over 2, tan squared of u over 2. Then I get 1 minus cosine of u divided by 2. And so these two u's now turn into one u. Now if I take the square root of each side, I get what are called the half angle formulas. So sine of u over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of u over all of all that over 2. And here, it really could be plus or minus. So you need more information about u to determine which it is. Cosine of u over 2, again, is this. Tangent of u over 2 is that. Okay, just by taking the square roots. Again, it could be plus or minus. So these are called the half angle formulas. All right. Um, so, I don't know. Let's, Let's take a break now, and I'll do this afterwards. This will just take a second. Almost. No, the, the clock was in the circle. Oh, I think it's a, uh, a, a, a think of a Bradley, a Bradley body vehicle. I mean, as you turn the turret, the your your deflection is is graded in the middle as long as inside the turret. You know, so, so as you turn you know what deflection you are facing in front of your vehicle. And it's a no, so if you, if you know you're driving north, you do north, and you turn to 4,800, now you know you're driving north, so you're facing west. And you can pull down the tow. Sure, we're not See, I guess that's why I want to say, I think the park went down for about 30 years. Yeah, it's it's a Oh, that reminds me. I looked at my lunch out of my car. <laughs> So, like, so like this, 
I'm sure someone has a great idea about that. <laughs> but everyone, including the math professors who are forced to teach it, but they would occasionally break out some like uh, training on the road. Like, yes, so and I want to break it the end. So it was like uh, all of them were odd for him. No, it was like this. this the, the building had like four floors, and each floor was a circle, or they had like a uh, like your hallways were kind of like there was a big spiral staircase in the center, or spiral ramp in the center, and they had a set of different staircases. And then in each, if you measure the circle, there was like a center portion of the big walk that was you could go into, and there was one hallway. The interior went from three points, and they would like come down to the point that were like 10 feet on the inside, but the outside would come back and then 30 feet, whereas, whereas the outer room was kind of like. 40, so they weren't close. You were like, this is a square one. And the first thing we know about the interior ones, we were like, what? The front of the room had room for like two desks to teach there. I don't know that I would call it. Well, so, yeah, and, and that makes sense if you had all of them were staying on them. It's like, put them out. If you just had, 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 had big classrooms, no. you would see the 100 people in each of those pies. No, no, they were like, they were flat like this. Yeah. And about like so, 10 or 10 feet, 30 feet, that's kind of small. I, I, if I were to think like an architect, that would be, that would be neat if it was all big, huge plastic. The problem is if it makes them bigger, then it gets too curved. Yeah, on the outside, you know, it's still like, it's 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 Senior level class, yeah, and you have that. people like yeah. literally just no, no, sitting no, no, there no, and their desks are squares and they'll be you know, like, no one follows. I was about to say, yeah, they were planning to be surprised. Like, when I was graduating, one son you get is fine. Take it. What was that? This was at NC State. I was at the front. I had to plug this front of the ATM like a pure boy right there. Yeah, like they, all I know is when I graduated, it might be my house. You know, our company was going to cost our first year. Some people have their product. I remember they were so excited. It's cost people. It's like, wow, it's a one-star design. Yeah, 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 it's like,
and I'll be like, come in. Chicken pox or It's like it's zero calories, it's like you haven't been like celery shaving. <laughs> Things that cost aren't good for you. Things that are free. Like, I heard you have a big idea. I had a doctor. Do you have a star? I heard it when, when humans first started making wine. <laughs> And yeah, VR, they used to add lead shavings. Yeah, I heard that yesterday. They used to add like lead shavings and marble shavings. Right, yeah. Pine resin, just to make it taste good because it tasted awesome. And they used to start making wine. And just generally tasted horrible. They added like lead, marble shavings, pine resin, just spiced it up. It tastes better. That was on NPR the other day. I know. Yeah. They put also put marble dust. What about honeymoon? Yeah. Is that the same? Is it, is it gold? That's some good taste of stuff. <laughs> you want to add marble dust? <laughs> oh, well, you have to add lead to something to make it taste better. It's really, it must be real. The baby thing? Actually, great series. How beer saved the world. Oh, I heard yeah. that. I haven't seen it. Yeah. 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 And if we didn't give you enough, then we would have to get straight. Straight. <laughs> the economy was based on beer. <laughs> but, but beer is God's way of telling us that he loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> 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 What are you doing? Because the water will be there. I still wonder if they like need wine back now. I don't know if it's too young. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We gotta go back. Okay, we've got two sessions left. All right. So we're in the middle of talking about half angle formulas. So if you just take the power reducing formulas, tweak them a little bit, take square roots, you get what are called the half angle formulas. So you can take the trig functions of half an angle and express that in terms of trig functions of the angle. And whether things are plus or minus when you take the square root, you need some additional information about the angle to determine which is which. Generally, just knowing what quadrant <coughs> u over 2 is in, that will uh, that's enough to tell you whether it's plus or minus. So. <coughs> so something funny about the tan formula. There's actually a, um, a nicer formula for this that you can get. And here's the idea. If you take this, well, maybe you can kind of simplify it using the trick we use for the one <coughs> plus root 3 over 1 minus root 3. We're going to do something similar to that here. Take both sides and multiply by 1 minus cosine u. 
So take each side, multiply one cosine, one minus cosine here. Then on the bottom I get the difference of two squares, and on the top I get the square of one minus cosine u. But the difference of two squares in this case, combined with the Pythagorean identity, gives you sine squared u. So this is nice. Now I've got a square of something on top and a square of something on the bottom. So that's that whole thing squared. I plug that back into here and take the square root, and the square goes away. And I'm just left with 1 minus cosine u divided by sine u. And you might ask, well, what about the plus or minus? Well, it turns out you can go through every quadrant case by case. And you always get this. It's always plus. So there is no minus. So this formula always works for every u. So you get a nice, simple thing not involving the square root for the tangent of half an angle. Isn't that nice? Uh, we could also have done this by multiplying through at each side by 1 plus cosine u. And then we get an alternate formula. So if we multiply by 1 plus cosine u, then I get the difference of two squares on top and a perfect square on the bottom. So now I get sine u over 1 plus cosine u quantity squared. Plug that in and take the square root, I get that. And again, there's no sine ambiguity. It's always equal to this. So, so those are nice alternate formulas, two nice alternate formulas for the tan of half an angle. Questions? Of course, you have to know both cosine u and sine u as well. Uh, uh, both you need to know both of those. So you might also need to have some additional information about what quadrant u is in to get all that information. All right.